Grace Ministries presents Hour of Hope with Pastor Chona Emmanuel. Hour of Hope, Message of Salvation time of refreshing and a moment of grace. Grace Ministries Turning trashes into treasure. Our bless you. Welcome again to Hour of Hope. May God bless you. And I pray that today's message will be a blessing to you. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you, great and mighty God. We welcome you, Spirit of the living God. For we cannot do without you, O oh Lord. Touch me, Lord. Use me to declare your word with your fear. To declare the truth of your word, O oh Lord. Grant me unction to function and alter us as your servant. And Father, Lord, touch the hearers, O oh Lord, that the word shall speak in their life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah, Lord. Encourage every troubled heart. Lord, release hope and release strength and release joy. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Today I'll be sharing a message that I titled There is still hope. We are in a season when everything seems as if as if you know the earth is ending today, everything is is you know working, nature groaning, the earth groaning, you know, everything, the firmament is speaking, the human being that God created, you know, changing, you know, nations again, nations, all kinds of things are happening, money melting down and all kinds of things, changes everywhere. But let me tell you, in all this thing, God said to us, there is hope if you read the book of romans chapter 5 verse 5 he said something he said hope does not disappoint you know many people hope on the money hope on their academic hope on their beauty hope on the, trust everything they put their trust in everything but thank god that we have hope because we know we have abba father where we can cry out to we have hope because we know we have God. We have hope because we know Jesus Christ is our Lord. When we have Jesus Christ, there is hope. No matter, despite whatever that is going, that is happening, his word told us in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He said, my thoughts, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. This is the, 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 I mean, when I read this scripture, most of the time when everything, when I look at everything, how things are unfolding this day, rapidly, speedily, when I see that we are the generation that will be raptured, when I see that we are the generation that will not test dates, as long as we put our hope in the Lord and live according to him and be Christ-like, I'm telling you, I rejoice because there is Oh, here is market. We come here to buy. And everything anybody buy, he will go buy and give account to the person that give you the money, which is your life, that send you, which is a God, to come and buy in this life. You must give account of what you bought. You must give account of whatever you've done. You must give account as how you live. So if you hope that money is everything in your life, that money now is disappointing because... So we soon come, all the scriptures that the Bible talk, everything that God says is coming to pass in your eyes, in my eyes. We are experiencing it, we are witnessing it, we are witnessing it, we see it manifesting, unfolding every day. Now some people are still running up and down, believing that there is still more hundred thousand years are waiting for them. Oh, I pray that we will have hope like like Jonah, have hope and depend like I did. I pray we will have hope like Noah. 
have hope and believe God. When he asked him to build him an ark, he had the hope. He trusted God. And he began to build. Despite the mockery and laughter of men, but Noah was busy building. He was busy doing the things that God wanted him to do. In that same time, in the mix of that calamity and in the mix of people excelling in evil, he refused not to excel in evil. He Because hope drives you. Hope directs you. In that same time, when the earth is about to be destroyed, when people are living anyhow, like today we see it. When you are doing battle, you will be recognized. When you are doing evil, you will be recognized. Even then, you will be praised for it. But people who are doing who fear God seems to be as if God is silent on their matter. But child of God, let me tell you, God is not silent. That was what happened in the time of Noah. People were laughing, people were mocking, people were passing, seeing him building an act, and they will pass over, they were laughing, and they will say, Look at this man, what is he doing? But child of God, let me tell you, the good news is that there is hope because no everything that had beginning have an end. And I know that you know that you can feel that you. Can test that you can testify that as long as whatever that is happening today, that it shows that there is hope for them that believe in the law. Is it are you going to repair the finance? Nobody can repair it like at times I see them have you all meeting you wrote this, you wrote that, you wrote this. Let me tell you, the word of God can never be uttered, it can never be broken. The word of God 10, uh, 2008, I prophesied about this, and the Lord told me that 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 the economy is going to the economy is going to be shaking, and that very day God say this is the sign that we follow that people who are here will know that I have spoken through you. He said the sign is that the next day California will be will be set on fire and Australia will begin to burn and that starts happening and then we see the money went down. Everybody, many people lost their job and the same thing is about to happen again in 2013. The child of God, the joy is that we serve a God. I don't know where people are getting the prophecy that give it to people, telling people that things are going to get better. Yes, in the Lord. That's the only way. Not in this world anymore because this world is finishing. The earth is growing, waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God according to Romans chapter 8 verse uh, verse 18 that the earth is growing that means when it's growing when all these things you know earthquake in diverse places flood up and down all these things is the end of the end time is the signs of the end time that the bible told us that is going to happen but where is your own hope in all these things happening or are you still busy running up and down trying to make money to build them story building let me tell you the bible said a stone will not be left on top of each other with all these things that we are running up and down seeking trying to find out how we're going to do it how we're going to make it out let me tell you child of god the Bible says something. He said in the book of uh, he said in the book of uh, um, he said in the book of Jeremiah chapter thirty one verse seventeen. He said there is hope in in your there is hope in your future, says the Lord. There is hope. That's what God is saying to us in the book of Jeremiah thirty one seventeen. There is hope in the future. The future is talking about is no more this. He's talking about the eternity. There is hope because he's going to prepare a place where we will, where he's coming back to take people who are prepared, who hope on him. He's going, I said to people on Sunday, I was preaching, I preached a message that I titled that heaven is prepared for people who are prepared. If you are not prepared, you will not see heaven. When you are prepared, God is going to prepare for you. So that's why there is hope. Though no matter the preparation now, it may be difficult, it may be hard, you know, because you are not cutting corners, you are not compromising your faith. Hold on, there is hope. Don't compromise your faith. Hold on, there is there is hope. For God who will serve. Hi viewers, I'm Carol Casey from Grace Ministry. I'm inviting you for the Grace Women Breakfast Meeting, which takes place every second Saturday of the month from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. It's a place where we deal with issues of life. Come, you will be blessed. God bless you.
So when we keep up, abundance that many people went and chased abundance, they drop the hope. Want to hope, but want to trust in their hearts. The Bible said the arm of man will fail. What do you hope on? God is sending me to speak to you today. Hope on me. When you keep your hope in the Lord, the Lord will not put you to shame. There is hope. I seen the Lord. I seen his handwork. I seen the Lord visit people who put their hope in him. I seen the Lord transform the people who put their hope. Look at what Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8 says. He said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, who spread out his root by the rivers, and will not fear when heat comes. Heat is coming. <laughs> heat has already started. Heat has come. Nations against nations. You know, war, war mongers trying to raise up war. Try look at what is happening it, like in a nation like Syria. People dying every day. Every day human beings are dying. They are human beings. But there are people in that Syria, which I believe some of them are watching this program. There are people in that Syria which, which believe God that there is hope even though they die. There is still hope. Even though they live, there is still hope. People who have hope, like Peter, or like I mean like Paul, who said, if I live is gain, if I die is gain. If you understand the God you serve, there is hope. That's why the Bible says in the book of book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 12, the Bible told us about, about Peter, James, and Herod, what they did to James, they killed James when he grabbed them for preaching the gospel. They killed James, James, okay, that's fine. Then they got Peter, when they arrested Peter, they bound his two hands with the squad, hold him there, and I believe it's like today. I'm paraphrasing, if it's today, you know, they would have announced him on CNN, they would have announced him on BBC, the, the chief judge would have signed the death penalty for execution, they've done everything for him. And this man, you know what? When they burned his hand, he does of he was snoring. You know what? People that know their God shall do a sport. People that know their God, they shall be strong. People that know their God, nothing moves them. They are his hope, child of God. I'm speaking to somebody today who is looking at all these things and fainting. I said to you, faint not, there is hope. Peter did not bother himself. He did not worry himself. But the church was honestly praying for him. And God stepped Thing. They were to kill him the next morning, but at midnight, we serve God of 24 hours turn around. It's not yet late. This, I don't know what you've gone through that you may think, oh, it's too late. But Peter was in the morning, but at midnight, six hours to the time, or seven hours to the time, God appeared, sent his angel to go and rescue him, call him, get up, get up, get up, get up. And he took him out. And, and I believe that when Peter when Peter came outside, he started fighting, I mean, he started saying, where am I? Where am I? He didn't believe, he thought he was dreaming. That's why the Bible said, when God turned the captivity to Zion, they were like them that dream dreams. Child of God, there is hope for you. When others are crying, casting down, you are declaring, lifting up because there is hope. There is hope for you. When others are saying, no way, God is saying, I am the one that had the keys of David. The door I open, no man can shut it. When others are saying that things are so hard, God is saying, if you are planted by the river, so water he said you will be like a tree that brings fruit in season that means if you are planted by me that means if you if if you are alive if i'm the supplier of your destiny that means if i'm the one that you depend on that means if i'm the one that you look onto that means if i'm the one that you believe in that means if i'm the one that you trust in that means if i'm the one that you imitate and that means if i'm the one that you depend on that you will never never be disappointed that's what god is saying to somebody today I don't know who is listening to this message. I don't know who, who the enemy has brought a place of no making you to believe that there is no more hope. Tell him, devil, you are a liar. There is no truth in you. The word of God declared to me here that there is hope. If you go to Hebrew chapter 6 verse 19, this is what he said. He said, this hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both, both sure and steadfast. And which enters 
the presence behind the veil. Oh my God. There is hope. There is hope, child of God. That means you are like a sheep that want to, that the tongue, that the, that the, that the webs of water want to carry away. But anytime it comes, you are the anchor of God that hide within the veil of his presence will pull you back. So that means he will never let the storms of life carry you. He will never let the waves of life carry you. He will never let the heat of life burn you. He will never let the whatever that is happening come against you because you are a child of God. He will never let the plans of the enemy stop you because you are a child of God. Oh, somebody praise the Lord and bless the good Lord for whom he is. If you go to the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 13, he says something sweet there. He said, may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. May that, may that Lord fill you up. May he fill you in the name of Jesus. May everything that occupy you, that do not speak of hope, be deleted. And let, let, may the Lord purge it off your life. May the Lord, may, 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 may heaven love in you. And then begin to delete everything that the enemy wants to occupy you. Anxiety, worriness, dejection, rejection, pain, sorrow, you know, stagnation, everything that is not of God. You know, limitation, barrenness, everything that is not of God. May God delete it from you today and fill you up with his joy, with his hope that as you look, you will know that God has called you. That's why the Bible said to us that see, he has not given us spirit of fear but he's given us spirit of sound mind, peace and joy, love. That's the mind, that, that power, that's the, 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 the heart. That is the heart God has given to us. Be strong and be bold and know that you serve a good God. Let's go to Lamentation chapter 3, verse 21 to 24. He said, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Though the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. Through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. Because his compassion faileth not. They are, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Oh, my God. The Lord is my portion. His love faileth not. Yesterday on is gone. Today is a new one. Though, because you didn't die yesterday, that means there is still hope for God to bring you to, to bring your destiny to pass. There is hope that it, no matter the storms, the Bible says in the book of, in the book of uh, Isaiah 40, uh, Isaiah 25, it says, Hide me under your, under your wings until the has me, hide me in, he said, hide me in your tabernacle until the calamity pass over. That means God has made a provision for his children. That this is our season to run to his place, to run to him, to dwell in him. Not running to God is not only just coming to church. You, when you're in church, you're a Christian. When you're outside, you are more than devil. No, that's not what God is talking. God is talking about running to him, being a child of God, live like him, believe in him. Trust him, keep his commandment, walk according to his will, observe his status and commandment. Then he will bless you, he will lift you, he will take you to a place where no man can take you to. He will lead you. Even though now we are noticing that the whole earth is shaking, I mean shaking and groaning, but there are people that God is blessing now that, that have never seen blessing before. That's why the Bible said to us in the book of 61, he said, Arise. And shine for the glory of God has risen. Oh, and the thick darkness has covered the earth. Let me tell you, this is the season where people who serve God in truth and the spirit will see the mighty hand of God. And I see you seeing the mighty hand of God. I see your heart change back to God. I see your trust turn faith. I see you not being a worthy Christian, but an unmovable, the one that is unmovable, you know, unmovable Christian that will stand against all times, stand against against every situation, stand against every trial, stand against everything that the enemy plan. I see the Lord changing you. I see the Lord taking you to that place in the mighty name of Jesus. God said to us here, he said that his love is new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of God. His mercy endureth forever. Because of his mercy we are not consumed. You will not be consumed. No matter the, no matter where you hearing this message, whether you hearing it in Gaza, whether you hearing it in Israel, Wherever they are 
attack is happening, the child of God, I want you to know that God has said something and that's what I believe. The Bible says, God said, I will not consume the righteous with ungodly. That's what the word of God said. He will never destroy the righteous with ungodly. So wherever you are, whatever that is happening, as long as you are a child of God, you will not be consumed. So as I speak this word today and as I preach this message today, I want whoever who is listening, depend on God, hope on God, trust God, don't shake, don't fear, no shaking, know that God is God any day, any time. There is no God like him. He's the one that sees it, he's the one that knows it. He sees everything that is happening. He's not, he's not God that slumbers. So maybe to say maybe he's sleeping when the enemy comes and attacks him. Maybe he's sleeping, he did not know. No, things you are going through, he sees it. Wherever you are, whatever you go through, there will always be hope. Depend on God, trust on God, look unto Him, follow Him. He can never put you down. Joseph depended on God. Even today, he said that you have to notice that they are not happy. What's the matter? Is everything okay? Is this okay? But you know what? God permitted everything to happen. Child of God, who am I talking to this morning? I am speaking to somebody who may be feeling like Joseph felt. Who they lied on you, they accuse you falsely, they walk against you falsely, like your God is alive. He sees it, he knows it. Hope in him. Don't defend yourself. When time comes, it's sweeter for God to defend you. People who hope in God does not defend themselves. Joseph did not go defending himself. Joseph trusted God. Joseph looked unto God. Joseph believed God. When the day came, God began to walk in the heart of the king. Began to turn the heart of the king. Began to play the heart of the king. When God finished dealing with the heart of the king, the Bible told us what happened. That the king began to send for him. Joseph, from where he was, the day he left, the day he came out, oh my God, that is hope. That means all this year that men thought is wasted. God can never let his children waste their year. A child of God, your years can never be wasted. Somebody who is listening, here. Maybe you think that you've been wasting years, but let me draw something to you. Joseph, the day he was called by the king to come, when he got to the king's palace, the Bible says that very day, that very day, it was not two days, it's within 24 hours, God performed something in his life that wiped away reproach, that wiped away pain, that wiped away shame, that wiped away mockery. That is the God whom we ask Serving. That same God, he, his standard had never changed. The Bible says that when Joseph entered the house, after interpreting the, the vision, which no man was able to interpret, God touched the king. The king now said, minus me, in short, because I'm on the throne, no man will ever be above you. That means you are not the prime minister. That means you are not the second in command. That means from prison to palace. But he depends on God. He trusted in God. He believed God. He know that God will not put him to shame. Child of God, do you trust God? Do you believe God? Do you know that God? Show me Manuel that is preaching to you. I am a I am I am a product of hope. I am a product of faith. I believe God. I trust God. That's part of the knockdown from every angle, from every aspect. But my God, the Bible said that the more the, that the more Pharaoh attacked someone, the more he works great. I'm telling you that you child of God, as long as you have hope in the Lord, the more Saul was, Saul, Saul was attacking Samuel, Samuel was, I mean, attacking David, David was at waxing greater and greater. So, child of God, have hope in the Lord. All these things we are seeing today is working out for your good. That's why I thank God for the man that sang a song and said, I can see everything turning around. That's why the Bible said to us, all oh, work it for good. To them that trust Him, to them that hope in Him, to them that believe God, to them that trust in the Lord, do you trust in Him? Do you believe in Him? When you, everything you are seeing, do you, think, do you know it's working out for you? Because you will not stay here when the Antichrist starts. You will not stay here to experience the third world war that is almost closer. By God's grace, we would have been raptured. That's why I say to you, go back to God, hope in Him. Don't compromise your faith. Whether you see food, you don't see food, 
put your faith in him. Whether it's working out, it's not working out, put your faith in him. But let me tell you again, the Bible says that even though, even though, you, he said, at Psalm 34, he said, I've never seen a righteous being forsaken or beg for food. You can never beg for food. He will always provide for you. May that God, whom I preach, who is called Jehovah El Shaddai, great and mighty God, Jehovah Jireh, the great provider, may he provide for you and meet your needs. God bless you. Write me and email me. Thank you so much. Or you call the office. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.